Welcome to Some Guy's Garage. Today, Project Wheeled RC Tank Part 4, where we build some bearing mounts and get started on the chassis. We'll pick up where we left off last time, machining the bearing mounts at the lathe. I'm making the bearing mounts out of some 1.5 inch 6061 aluminum rod. First facing and then turning the outside diameter to clean it up, then center drilling progressively bigger to remove the bulk of the material, then boring the center to size for the bearing, and finally parting off each mount. Then I moved over to the drill press and using the other 3D printed template I made last time, I drill the holes for where the bearing mounts will screw into the chassis, and then at the vise, tap these holes for the threads. So here are the 12 bearing mounts I made. Next I got started on the chassis, which I'm making out of 4 inch wide, 11 gauge steel flat bar. I measured out each piece and cut them on my DeWalt dry cut saw. I really like using this saw as it cuts very quickly and cleanly compared to an abrasive chop saw. Then did some minor cleanup on the disc sander after. And a little bit more with the grinder. So here's the chassis. It's 18 inches this way, 16 inches wide, and four inches tall. There's three inch gaps here, and this is where the gear train will actually ride, or the, the chain drives will be within these spots here and here. And then in the motors, or in the center, we'll have the motors, the batteries, and the electronics somewhere in the middle here. You can also see there that the wheels will run just a little bit ahead of the chassis and a little bit behind. And because the wheels are 10 inches tall and the chassis is only 4 inches tall, it'll actually be able to drive inverted as well. So pretty much unflippable other than getting on its side, it, it'll always keep going. So next came drilling all of the holes in the plates to mount the various components of the drivetrain to it. This is really frustrating to do without a mill, as it's difficult to, on a drill press to get exact alignment of the holes. Even when using a center punch, the drill still tends to walk a bit. In any case, I clamped together all four side plates and drilled them together to at least ensure that all of the holes lined up with each other. This way, the shafts would ride straight in the chassis. I also drilled and slotted for where the chain tensioners will go, a bit crude, but it should work. As well, I quickly roughed out the drive shafts, first cutting sections on the chop saw out of half inch aluminum rod, and then turning them to size on the lathe by first spacing, then center drilling for the live center before taking them to final diameter. I needed these shafts to make sure that the chassis was aligned before welding. So just before welding, here's roughly what all the sprockets and shafts will look like. The motor will drive this, which will then come across to here. Don't mind that the screw just fell out. And across to the two drive axles. All right, I'm all set up to weld here. I have the shafts still in place with the bearing mounts just to keep things in alignment. And you can also see the temporary bolts, but this is where the chain tensioners will go. I'll start with just tacking this corner together and then again on the other side, and then I'll move on to the second side here with the other plates. I'm MIG welding with my Miller Multimatic 215. It really has been rock solid for the roughly five years I've had it. If you wanna see a tool test Tuesday on it, let me know in the comments below. Now just getting the other side set up for welding. I've got the one, two, three blocks clamped in there to give me my three inch spacing and have this corner at least lined up. I'll pull that one into square once I've got this one packed over here. I also flipped it over and tack welded the bottom side as well. Then I grinded all the welds smooth so that the eventual top and bottom covers will sit flush. So I've just got everything tacked. I'm gonna finish weld it after once I've gotten more of it assembled and make sure everything fits and that I don't need to make any changes. But that's the general shape of it. I continued on to make the mounting plates for the motors out of the same four inch flat bar. You'll have just seen me making these plates for the motors. So they're slotted, so the motors have a little bit of adjustment back and forth. 
um, just kind of like this so that I can tension the chain. And these will both slot down into the corners here. So down here and down here. And that's where the motors will end up mounting. Like that. And I'll just weld those in, which you'll see next. Just one other note before I weld those in. You can see the slots are pretty crude. So all I did is drilled two holes, used a body saw to cut the slots, and then a die grinder to file them out somewhat round and straight. But this is a case where a mill would be really helpful, where you could just plunge with an end mill and then cut sideways to get them perfectly shaped. And then back to welding. It's surprising just how many tack welds this took. I also welded in a couple tabs which will hold the board with the electronics. After welding, I cleaned up the welds with the grinder. Just for fun, I turned off the lights to catch some sweet shots of sparks flying. Check it out. At the end of the day, after machining, welding, drilling, and generally messing about, this is what the garage looked like. Overall, I try to keep things tidy, but tools do get scattered everywhere. But I thought I'd give you a little bit of a behind the scenes look at things. Next time we'll continue with getting the sprocket drive completed and get some mounts made for the wheels. And then hopefully we'll be able to finish up some of the chassis and maybe by the end of next video, it'll actually be ready to move. So getting pretty close now. And with that, we'll call it a day for part four. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.